This week's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hi, ah, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's doing great. This is the first cloudy day that we've had uh, for probably three or four weeks, I think. Feels really good and I actually have a coat on, which <laughs> I actually quite like. Um, I've come down to uh, a local beach again. This, this beach I've featured in a, a few videos now. And if you haven't seen any of those, I'll, uh, I'll leave a link up in the corner here so you can have a look at them. Um, it was looking really promising this morning. So I scooted down here. Um, there was lots of clouds over to the west and it was quite clear to the east. But of course, as soon as I got here, clouds moved in and uh, blocked the, the morning sun. We had about 30 seconds of decent light and then it was finished. And I wasn't going to do a vlog. I thought, ah, maybe I'll just go home, go back to bed. But uh, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about uh, some of the filters I've been using lately. Uh, you may have noticed that I've changed uh, my filters for the longest time, I was using breakthrough photography filters, which I, I really like. Uh, they have some absolutely fantastic filters. I was using the screw-on filters. There's a company called Case, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, and they sent me some filters to try out. And a lot of my friends use Case filters and swear by them. So I thought, well, I'll give them a go and, and see, you know, see what they're like. Okay, now the tide is going out a little bit, so I have to be quick with this one, otherwise I'm gonna lose that uh, the ocean in the background. But what I'm doing right now is just concentrating on a long pano of just the, the boulders and uh, the ocean. No islands or uh, mountains in the background. I'll show you what I have. Okay, so this is the composition that I have. And uh, one of the things that's really important to me is to try and simplify things as much as possible. So hence the use of an ND filter to uh, really smooth out the water so that we're not getting textures in the waves here because I, I just find those distracting from these rocks. And what I've tried to do is separate each of these individual rocks so they're not merging with one another. And I do that with a lot of my compositions, um, I find it important to me is to try and determine what works in the frame as a separate element and then either hide it if it doesn't work or crop it out if it doesn't work. And if it does add to the photograph, then try to have it in there so that it's, uh, it stands out as its own subject. So. When I look at this, to my eye, we have these as like stepping stones and you'll notice that none of them are cropped off or uh, merge with um, any of the other rocks, except for this one on the edge here. This one is cropped off a little bit. Now, earlier I was here and the water was coming up to here, so it was working a little bit better. As I said, the tide is going out, so it doesn't work quite as well, but it's still a very simple uh, photograph. And the, uh, the lines in the foreground here, I think add a little bit of texture as well. So as far as ND filters go, uh, what I'm using right now is an ND64. But the nice thing about this filter is that it has uh, a, a polarizer, circular polarizer built right into it. And that's what I really loved about the breakthrough photography filters is uh, you didn't have to stack filters. So if you wanted to use, say, a polarizer with an ND filter, then in the past you'd have to stack them, which can kind of cause problems uh, with quality and uh, also adds weight. So breakthrough and case filters, and I'm not sure what other filter companies have come up with the, the same kind of concept, but having a, a CPL or circular polarizer with the ND, I think is a brilliant idea.
Now, the way that these filters work is that they attach to a ring that screws onto the front of your lens. Now, of course, if you want to take full advantage of, of these filters and use them quickly and efficiently, then ideally you want to have one of these rings on each of your lenses. And when it comes to filters, what I do is I find the biggest diameter lens that I have, which in this case is 82 millimeters, that's for the GFX system. So all of my filters are 82 millimeters. So I can use all of those uh, lenses with the same filters. I don't have to have different size filters. And what I do is I, I'll have a, either a step up ring uh, from say, I don't know, uh, a 77 millimeter up to 82. And then I'll have that permanently attached to my lens. In this case, this is 82 millimeters, uh, so I just need an 82 millimeter ring. So I just leave those permanently on so that every time I go to use a filter, it'll just instantly uh, just attach like that. It's no, no problem. Now, the only problem with this is that if you use lens hoods, uh, then it, your lens hood might not work with some of the lenses that you have because if you have a step up ring on there then of course you're not going to be able to get your lens hood on there. So if you like to use lens hoods then this might be a problem. The other thing is is that your regular lens cap might have trouble fitting on your lens with this ring on. So Case does have their own magnetic uh, lens caps which seem to work great. Uh, they work exactly the same as the filters. They just uh, attach with the magnets, like so. But of course, you'll, you'll need rings for each of your lenses, and also, uh, in this case, 82 millimeter lens caps for each of my lenses as well. And of course, these lens caps work with the filter attached as well, like so. Once again, I'd like to thank Squarespace for supporting my channel and sponsoring this week's video. One of my favorite features of a Squarespace website is the ability to quickly and efficiently update a gallery or page either from a desktop computer or while on the fly using the Squarespace app from my mobile device. Loading multiple images onto a page is quick and offers the ability to change a design or page quickly and elegantly without any coding knowledge. Want to sell your products? No problem. Setting up shop is also quick and intuitive. Sound interesting? Why not head over to squarespace.com and try it for free. And if you like what you find, use the code Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. All right, this is a fun little composition. I was here a few weeks ago with my friend Brian. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link up in the corner here. And we did come across these textures last time, but I couldn't find a composition. Uh, but I think this time I might have found something. It's just such a, a, neat, um, a neat area for these textures and patterns. Now, this is a situation where you might use a circular polarizer uh, because you have these little pockets filled with water, sometimes the reflections can be a little distracting. Now I have put a polarizer on, but it's not doing an awful lot because uh, the reflected light is uh, not 90 degrees to the uh, polarizer. So there's only certain sections that are where it's working and other sections where it's not working. Like there's reflected light in the little pools at the top part of the, uh, the composition and that the polarizer is getting rid of those uh, reflections but where I am here it's not doing anything but I think I'll use a polarizer anyway just adds a little bit of contrast
Okay, now when it comes to using filters, I generally use them very sparingly and only if I have a specific idea in mind, like the one I just showed you. Uh, but when it comes to the choice of filters, I mean, there are, there are a whole slew of different choices out there. Personally, I just use the circular polarizers and the ND filters, and of course the ND filters with the circular polarizers built into them. But even with those filters, I use them sparingly and I don't use them that often. I'll often use a circular polarizer when I'm in the forest uh, to get rid of reflections. But even then, there are certain situations where I actually prefer uh, to have reflections. If you're not sure on a scene whether you should use a filter or not, then just take uh, an image with the filter and one without and then just compare the results and pick your favorite image. Something else that you can do with the Wolverine filters if you don't like carrying a pouch like this is you can actually stack them. So case filters, they, they sell the caps for the front of your lens or the front of the filters, but they also make one for the rear of the filters so you can stack them like this. And that's a really uh, compact, handy way to carry filters. You just pick and choose the filter that you want and then you can just stack them back like that and, and throw them into your bag and they're pretty well protected. Some of the things that I really like about the Wolverine filters over some of the other magnetic filters that I've used. First of all, they're extremely thin. So thin and light, tempered glass, so they don't break very easily. And also probably the most important thing is that the filter quality is superb. With the ND filters, there's little to no color casts throughout the whole image. Uh, so they are very neutral. In the past, I've used other brands of filters and they often have a, a bit of a cast to them, which isn't a huge deal as long as the cast goes right across the whole image, because then you can just correct for it. But I have used some filters in the past where there might be a cast in one area and not another, and that can cause a huge amount of problems. So I've listed pretty much all of the positives to the case filter system. There is one thing that I would really like to see change on these filters though, and it's not just with Case, it's with a lot of the filter companies, and I've never seen this before, but when it comes to different degrees of ND filter or polarizer or whatever, I really wish that they would anodize each of the outside rings in different colors so that as soon as you look in your bag, you can just see, say, perhaps a red ring, you know that it's a, a CPL filter and just grab it straight away. The way it is now is that with all filters, for me to, to find the strength of filter that I want, I have to put my glasses on and then you have to look at each individual filter. Now with the ND filters, it's a little bit hard because you can say, well, you know, a 10 stop is pretty dense, so it's really hard to look through. Whereas say an ND8, you can actually see through it. But uh, failing that, uh, you know, you have to keep going through all the filters, unless you have a system where you have each uh, filter in a specific pocket of its own, which I'm not that organized to do. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about the filters or any filters, regardless of what brand they are, be sure to leave a comment down below. Thank you ever so much, everybody, for watching this week's video. And uh, until next time, bye for now. Before I forget, I just wanted to announce that I'm now offering my 2022 Quiet Light uh, calendar over at kozubooks.com. For the first 150 purchases, I'm also throwing in an original print of one of the images from the calendar, kindly donated by Photospeed Paper. So be sure to head on over to Kozu Books for the calendar. Also, my third printing of Quiet Light and Aspen, a zine of work that I took last fall in 2020. So go check them out at kozubooks.com. Thanks ever so much.